हे एवरीबॉडी कैसे आता है आपका नमस्ते नमस्ते सुबह यस वी डोंट हैव इलेक्ट्रिक लाइट वंडरफुल वीक विदाउट यू सेलिब्रेटेड दर्टी एथ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ वर्ल्ड पुरानी हीलिंग Yes, that's the only day I think uh, we were there for some time. Okay, so all right. So we have about fifty-eight uh, people compared to the earlier. I and I think they've forgotten about the session. <laughs> Not a problem at all. Uh, this is going to be recorded, so it shouldn't be a problem for them to come back and uh, and uh, kind of figure out what's happening. Okay, so let's start off with an invocation. You can stop sharing. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua Kaksvila Mahaguruji Meling, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, to the Lord Christ, to all the great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the great beings of knowledge, wisdom, and to the great beings of communication of our respective internets and wifi and the electricity to our soul and divine self we humbly ask for your great great blessings as we all come together to continue to have a greater deeper and clearer understanding of your priceless teachings as your wisdom continues to descend upon us help us to absorb and assimilate all this knowledge and use it to become better divine instruments in your service let thy will be done not the urges of our lower nature with thanks and in full faith so be it atma namaste namaste guys so welcome to chapter 16 right we ended with birth and now we're going to move to the other spectrum of the etheric double yes <laughs> oh wow it's so grainy and weird yeah. <laughs> uh, let me go and switch on the jack stop okay fine okay. do you have enough space okay so people let's open up to chapter 16 chapter 16 interestingly talks about um the end of the physical form and uh how we move into in uh, we come to the end of our life and then at that point what actually happens to our etheric double it's very very different from what uh, i assumed uh, for a brief period because of all that we know from master chua he doesn't really talk so much about uh, death uh, in 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 the books it's just uh, a couple of paragraphs but here we have a little bit more information so we say that uh, predominantly if you look at oops okay there's the light that's the generator at home okay so let's go on so we're talking about the etheric double and we realize that even when it comes to anesthesia uh, there are certain conditions when there are accidents where this etheric double can separate from the dense body right i remember from the earlier chapters we had mentioned this <clears throat> though it is always even at this point uh, still connected to the dense body or the physical body they give you several uh, ways of describing this they call it a thread uh, or a cord or an etheric matter and uh, also the magnetic cord <clears throat> so basically to understand that we have this this link that continues to 
be there even when we move into our astral body and, and we travel into the inner world. There is this constant link with our etheric double, yes? And this continues all through the time that we are alive, yes? As long as this physical body is alive, that continues. There's no change there. However, they say, at death, coming to the end of this life, now when this happens, there is a change with this etheric double you and I can have. And so what happens to it? Finally, it withdraws from, again, the dense body, right? Remember, there is still this core at this point. However, they say when it comes out of the uh, dense body, it is seen as a violet mist. Yes, like a cloudy violet mist and gradually condenses to continue to retain the frame or the shape of this person that uh, the, the, the physical shape of the person that has just expired or is expiring as they put it here, right? And this thread looks like a glistening thread, right? So it's glowing. And at the point that there, that death happens, at the moment of death, this glistening cord, this etheric cord, this magnetic cord that we call is snapped, it's cut, it's detached, right? And so as soon as that thing happens, so you're, the person is dead, the etheric body comes out looking like this violet thing and the connection between these two are for eternity severed, it's cut. Now remember when Amit spoke about the energy that comes, right? Through that, that silver cord that comes as Master Cho says, through that physical permanent seed, the energy that comes down is from the buddhic plane and so that energy comes down and then it spreads all over taking control of everything that's there in the physical body that we have organs and the blood and the cells everything it sees to it that the entire form continues to work as one organism right now at this point what happens is this web that is spread all over your being is now slowly withdrawn Right now, when it's withdrawn, it withdraws not only that, but also the accompanying prana. And so if you and I have tried to heal someone at that point where they no longer want to stay in their physical body, that has happened to me. Um, and or when you're trying to um, treat a patient who's close to death, you realize that no matter how much prana you send to that person, they are unable to assimilate the energy. Why? Because if you look at it, the soul is literally pulling back, pulling out of the physical or the dense body. And so as this web continues to extract itself, the prana along with it comes out. Now remember the prana is just not ordinary prana, there's the other prana as well. And also the soul energy that is within this. It dis disentangles itself from the dense matter, yes, at death, and draws itself towards the physical permanent seed that lies in your heart, right? And so it goes there to the physical permanent seed and the atom, the web and the prana then continue to rise along the secondary Sushumna Nadi. Yes, so the secondary Sushumna Nadi, it goes through the, that is the etheric body part. Yes, so through the Sushumna Nadi, going through what you call the third ventricle, which is inside here. And then, that is somewhere between, you know, they give you the position of it. It, do, it doesn't really matter, but it's basically going through your third ventricle and then exits your body, finally out of the body. Yes, the life web continues to kind of, you know, if you remember a mummy, the way it's, it's shrouded with that white cloth. Similarly, this, they say that the web continues to surround itself around this permanent atom and goes back all the way to where the higher soul resides, where your Atma resides. And so it goes back to the causal body, yes, and it will then come down only when there is a requirement for a new physical body again for that soul, for that Atma to continue to learn and grow. Till then, it stays in the causal level, yes? And it will come in later. So this is just the initial part. So what happens, there's the body, the, the, it kind of comes over, it's violet color, the whole energy is pulled into the permanent seed and then literally pulled out and goes all the way back home, which is the causal level. Do you want to talk now or later? Well, you can finish one more part. Okay, fine. And so uh, when this withdrawal continues to happen, the withdrawal of the etheric uh, double, 
The prana that comes out, yes. Uh, remember, we are talking about the web, the prana, everything that comes out. Now, when all this comes out, uh, with it comes the, sorry, and with it, of course, prana destroys the integral unity of the physical body. Remember, we said at this point, the body, even at this point when we're alive, it's working as one organism. Yes, it, it doesn't look at itself as different. But as soon as this energy from within us is pulled out at the point of death, it leaves the physical body and the physical body is no longer a unified unit. It starts to become like the Roman Empire. It starts to break down. Right. And so it says it starts to live now as a collection of cells, independent cells. They continue to live. Yes, but it's not in harmony as one organism. That's the basic thing. And so it says, the life of the separate cells themselves continue. And this is evident when you look at uh, dead bodies much later and you find that their nails are growing. I think the hair also continues to grow, right? And it says here that the moment the etheric double withdraws and consequently the prana ceases to circulate, the lower lives, that means we're talking about below, that with reference to the dense body, run rampant and begin to break down. Um, now, when they break down, interestingly, they continue to live and function, but as independent cells. Yes, and so it continues to say, the body is thus never more alive than when it is dead. But it is alive in its unit. The dead in its totality is complete that there's no totality anymore it just works in its unit so uh, alive as a congeries and dead as an organism correct and so it's basically a collection of cells and so the collection of cells continue to do its part and then of course it, it will also disintegrate and decompose and continue and so they talk about this particular quote by um, Eliphas Levi and he says, the corpse would not decompose if it were dead. All the molecules which compose it are living and struggle to separate. Yes, is that enough? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, let me just put it up. Page 17. Okay, death. Another topic I'm not so interested in. I don't think anybody's really interested in it. That's because people are, you know, afraid of it. I just don't see. Uh, anyway, we have seen, okay, all this Sumi has explained. Um, it's always connected. So basically, that's why uh, many people say to die is to be, uh, to... Uh, no, no, you again? die every night, oh, right? That's what they say. We talk about that. Um, and uh, basically, you've seen that the etheric double may be separate from the dense body, though it's always connected to the thread or a cord of etheric matter. Okay. Um, now, according to, I think, um, Alice Bailey in, in one book, I think maybe ponder on this or one of the books, uh, she talks about it being the life web uh, with which it is attached to. But I don't, I don't really think it is that because it says etheric matter. And that uh, is not uh, etheric matter. She talks about it as being the, the, the Buddhic life web. All right, but actually, according to when Master was explained to us, uh, some of the students they would experience uh, being seeing these, um, you know, they'd be traveling in the inner world and there would be like a cord attached to them, right? Um, and then, according to Master Choi, he's like, that is usually attached to the solar plexus because one of the students was getting a little bit afraid. <laughs> so he was like, is there something following me? Or there was this, uh, when you look back, when they were looking back, there was this thread. And that thread was connected to their solar plexus. So Master Cho was like, don't worry about that. That's just the um, that's just the cord attaching you to your physical body to make sure you're anchored while you're moving around in the inner world. So that's why your body will not die uh, unless it's meant to when you're traveling in the inner world. And it always knows where the address is. It will come back right back to you. Yeah, because of the cord, right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so apart from that, um, 
at that, the double finally withdraws. The way it says the double finally withdraws, I found very interesting. It's like, what are you waiting for this or what? I no, mean, it's what every you... night that it goes out. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Because okay. it <laughs> sounded a little sadistic to me. Like, no, no, finally, no, no, no. <laughs> get it's, out. It's the, last, <laughs> it's the last time it's going to go and leave the physical body. So, and... as a, so, so that's why, you know, sometimes the English is so, <laughs> the, the final, you know, the final exit, you know, out of all those exits. So, so that would, but that doesn't mean you're going to be uh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> that's if you're sleeping. But you know, if you're awake, um, at the the double at death, the double finally withdraws from the dense body, and um, and it's may seen as a violet mist. I have not seen any violet mist. It's a cloudy thing. But anyway, go on. It's just energy, um, gradually condensing into the figure, which is the counterpart of the expiring person, uh, person, and attached to the dense body by a glistening thread. Now, it just said it's attached to the body by a thread. Yeah, it's going to get disconnected. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, this thread or magnetic cord is snapped at the moment. Now, of course, it's not snapped. It is unplugged. Okay? If it's snapped, then you lose the life web. <laughs> and the seed will remain in the body. All right? So, obviously, it is a detachment process. It's the process of detaching. No, you're talking the link gets cut. Not the link. That. Not this link. This link. Well, no, that link also doesn't go because the soul is still in the etheric body. We'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. Um, now, as the buddhic life web, so, okay, we'll come to this um, <laughs> counterpart of the expiring person. Don't they mention that again? Floating over it? Yeah, see, I have to uh, still do that. I'll okay, so that the way. counterpart of the expiring person, when the, uh, the process of detaching is like this. Okay, I'll finish this. What does it say? As the Buddhic life web, okay, this Sumi explained, the atom, um, web, and prana. So the atom, the web, and prana. It, it, it's all one, all right? It makes it sound as separate. It's just to make you understand. But it's just the uh, prana flowing through the atom into the web. And the web is just energy. The way it's explained here, it, sometimes it makes you feel that it's physical, right? But it's not really physical. It's just energy. And the and and the and the 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 reason they're probably calling the web. This is my guess. Is because that's the way the energy is distributed along the nadis, right? So it just looks like a web, but it's just energy channels. You know, sometimes things look like a web, so you call it a web, right? But it's just energy movement of energy. Okay. Maybe like the wings of a dragonfly, something like that. But you know, we don't need to make it uh, you know so physical. Uh, it's just energy. So. The atom and the life web remains enshrouding the physical permanent atom in the causal body until the time. Uh, okay, so number one, this whole withdrawal process. The whole withdrawal process. All right, uh, we will talk about this uh, this point again, um, or should I just talk about it? Now? Okay, so when this when the seed starts to withdraw, it starts to detach from the uh, physical body. Uh, the, the etheric body detaches completely from the, the physical body. And as far as I understand it, you have been creating a thought form, a giant thought form that started with the physical elemental a long, long time ago on how the etheric body should be. And that's how the etheric body, the physical body was in fact molded, uh, you know, up from the etheric body. Right, so it's not really that the the way they're explaining it here that it has the figure of the physical body. The etheric body had the physical figure first. <laughs> Do you understand? It was the blueprint. It was the outline. The etheric body, uh, the physical body, is made on uh, the etheric body. Remember, I gave you quotes about that from Master's books and all that stuff to to validate that. So obviously, when it detaches, it's going to look a little bit like you. All right, because. Uh, of that whole aspect. Now, based on what I've read in other books, the not the whole detachment process. When I was reading the concept of detaching, I said, "What is detaching from what?" So, the etheric body uh, has a tendency to correspond. The law of correspondence is there between the etheric body and the physical body. That law of correspondence has to be broken. That's number one. Okay. So, the nadis are corresponding to your nervous system based on I think one of Alice Bailey's books, and that nervous system it starts to detach from. So the nadis start to detach and this whole process takes time. And once that process happens, the body is dead. All right. But the etheric body is still there, but the physical body is dead. Okay. Um, that is number one. So that's how the uh, detaching, detaching happens. Then number two, 
Uh, the withdrawal of the uh, etheric double, and with it, of course, prana, destroys the integral unity of the physical body, leaving it merely as a collection of independent cells. All right. Um, you see, remember, I think we spoke about this, this energy that comes down the, uh, it's not really prana, but it's, say, you can call it life energy. It's this type of energy that the highest soul provides when you're born. And the, the, the quality of this energy is, is integrating in nature, right? It, it's, um, you know, it combines and integrates cells as one. For example, so this energy comes down to the life cord, goes into your heart. From the heart, it radiates outwards to all parts of the body. This is explained in the Achieving Oneness book. Now, what it does is the reason it's radiating to every part of your body is that, um, it starts to hold these energies, the, the cells, the, the, the organs, everything, all the cells in your body are held together by this, by this energy. In fact, even your etheric body is held together by this energy. All right. So that is why you have this hand. And in this hand, you have maybe hundreds and thousands of cells, maybe billions of cells. But you can move your hand and it acts as one. All right. You don't think about it. All these cells, they act as one. Right now, what is integrating all these cells together is this special type of energy. This is what I understood from when Master Joe was trying to explain to us because he was telling us, You try and get uh, what did he say? You and try and get you try and get not a billion, but you try and get hundred thousand people to act as one, as one unit. Forget that you try and get you know a hundred people to act as one unit, <laughs> it doesn't work, they start fighting with each other. But this energy starts to integrate and hold in energy. That's one thing, integrating factor. The other factor is, of course, the ability to uh, absorb prana, right? Uh, since it's integrated, it allows the etheric body to absorb and distribute prana. That Sumi has already spoken about, all right? Uh, so that is the integrating factor. I think it's like when you see soldiers, when they're marching, it's amazing. It's, it's beautiful to see synchronicity and the way they go together. Yeah, so, the, so that is one. All right, so I'll just quickly um, try and open the presentation. This one? Yeah, I'll just share it. Um, so this is something that Master Choa uh, talks about. He says when the physical uh, permanent seed is withdrawn uh, from the physical body, the body as a whole dies, the cells are still alive. There's no longer the integrating factor. Okay, um, and of course, the physical permanency is gradually uh, absorbed. All right, so when the physical permanency dies, is withdrawn from the physical body, the body as a whole dies, but the cells are still alive, right? So it's, it's, it, it's funny, it's saying the same thing uh, that, that, you know, we're talking about, and that's what, almost the same thing that's mentioned in the book yeah. about the nails. All right, so. Hair, actually. About the hair, yeah. Nails in her mention. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, the moment the etheric body is withdrawn, the sequently the prana ceases to circulate, the lower lives, uh, <laughs> the cells run rampant and begin to break down the hereto definitely organized body. The body is thus never more alive than dead. Blah blah blah, and then <laughs> or do decompose. Okay. Okay. One second. One second. Um. So. Um, just to talk about this, it's like, um, you see, this integrating factor is very important for, for the body to be alive. It's like, um, if you've seen companies, it's not only this, this, this uh, energy is not only there in the physical body, it's there in families, it's there in companies, it's part of nature. Okay. So if you look at a company, uh, if you've observed certain companies, they're held together by the founder sometimes. You notice that everyone works together. There's dedication, there's everything. The moment the founder dies or the founder changes, something happened, then the, the, instead of working as unity, the people start to work independently and the company starts to break down. 
Now, the same thing happened in the Roman Empire. The same thing happened over and over again. Some people call the, this is one of the principles of what we call, it's part of what we call the principle of ensoulment. That's what I think. And um, if you see in families, the same thing happens. You have certain families. They're very rich. They're joint families. They're good families. The father holds them together. It's the father and the mother's energy. Sometimes only the father's energy that holds the two children together or the several children together. They're working together. They come for every holiday. They're working in families. They're even in the family business. Everything is perfect. While that energy is there, while the person is alive. Now, when the person's body dies, you notice that the uh, family starts to sometimes split. split or not interact with each other. They're not, un they are a family, but they're not, un you know, integrated anymore. They're not really one anymore. They're separate identities. I think it's happened with even big companies in India, right? From Ambani's to a certain ones. I may be mistaken, but that's what uh, seems to happen. So this is the importance of, just to make you understand this energy, all right? Now, this is all good. Okay, um, this is all good. Um, but basically, what was I going to say once again? You see, these books are good, but they're not talking about in general. They're not talking about, um, they talk about the bodies, if you notice. You know, this body exits from this body. And for some reason, there's not too much emphasis on the soul. Okay, I understand this is a book on etheric double, but you cannot talk about death without mentioning the soul, right? Or the at least the the whole process. So they will say that when the physical body dies, okay, now you live in the astral body. They didn't say the incarnated soul lives in the astral body. All right, um, they didn't say you, the incarnated soul, lives in the astral body. All right, so sometimes it gives an indication that you are the astral body itself. You know, so you're like, oh, okay, then the etheric body is there, then the astral, the mental, it, it, the soul is not really mentioned. The writing doesn't clearly state that you, the incarnated soul, change bodies, change vehicles, and change consciousness, all right? So when you read it, without thinking very carefully, uh, and you have no background on achieving oneness with the higher soul and other things, it gives you an impression that when you die, you become the astral body, <laughs> all right? Uh, as in you change form. Right. So from the physical body, you become the etheric body from the etheric body, you become the astral body. It's not really the soul is not really emphasized. So that, that's wrong. So so that's because they did not state that they don't say it clearly. All right. Uh, but you must understand that your astral body, body of light will also die. All right. It's shocking unless you realize that you're the soul. All right. The vehicles die, but you exist. <laughs> All right. So that is the whole idea behind that. And I've read many, uh, not many, but few authors on, on, on death. And they all emphasize the fact that as long as you uh, connect yourself to your body, uh, death becomes a very feared aspect. But if you don't look at it as, uh, as, um, as you, but as your vehicle, then it's just that you're changing your consciousness from one form to another form. It's no big deal. All right. So that is the whole idea behind the process of dying and death. All right. And um, that's why it's, it's very important to understand that death is, 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 is not the end. A human, that's why sometimes when they say the human being dies, the human being does not die. The human form dies. The human body dies. Right. The reason uh, why, um, for example, murder is considered a sin based on, say, Alice Billy and even uh, Master Cho and a few people is. Um, is because you have denied, not because the body is dead, because the soul is not dead, just the body. That's because you've denied the soul the opportunity to accomplish its purpose for that incarnation. You've cut it short, right? So it's a sin because you cut short the evolution of a soul, right? But if you think about it, if that is really the sin, then even physical murder should not be uh, only punishable. As punishable should be emotional and mental murder also. Because, you know, there are some times you might not physically stop the person by killing them and stop the person from growing and accomplishing a purpose. You might emotionally, mentally stop them. And that may be as bad karma as murder is. It's just something to think on, you know, because people just... Because our society right now is in physical, now transitioning to stress and emotional and mental, we are more phys concerned physically, but actually it's, it's much more complex than that, which is one of the reasons why, you know, the topic is 
is like that. So, but Alice Bailey, she does talk about it. I try and, you know, typing these uh, quotes are time consuming. <laughs> so, um, so if you look at what Alice Bailey says, oh, I didn't put animation, but the first thing she says is death is essentially a matter of consciousness. So we are conscious one moment on the physical plane and a moment later we have withdrawn onto another plane and are actively conscious there. And then she goes on to say that, look, if you are attached to your physical body, that's a big, big problem. But if you're not, if, you, if you're, uh, you know, understanding that you're a soul, then there is no problem. You're just moving your consciousness from one state to another state. In fact, she was saying that many of the initiates work on the inner world for so long. Uh, for them, it's just a matter of, ah, okay, so now I'm not working uh, over here and there. I'm working here 24 hours. So it's a matter of just transition. Okay. Now, the intent uh, for this I found interesting. The intent for a man to die, as every man has to die, at the demand of his own soul. So, one of the things she keeps mentioning, um, uh, one of the things she, she keeps mentioning is that it is you, the higher soul, that decide when you want to die. You have your own death date. In fact, there's not one death date. When we spoke to Master about this, Master Cho would tell us you have several death dates. Now, I don't know. Since I'm not so involved in the topic, I do not go into why do you have several death dates and what constitutes one and the other. I don't know uh, what this th that's about. Maybe it's like a fixed deposit. If you get good return, you renew it. Otherwise, if the return is not good, you, you don't renew the deposit. Come back. We'll make a new plan. You know, sometimes it could be something like that. But um, you have a series of death dates. And the reason he said that was he gave an example of one guy who was, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a person, it's just a story. And uh, he, he owned a factory and his friend would specialize in, um, in looking at a person and knowing that they're going to die. Okay. So this guy uh, would, was visiting his friend. He saw one of his employees, his friend's employees in the factory and said, Hey, you know, that guy is going to die. Why don't you give him a nice bonus? Let him go home and enjoy his time with the family. So the owner said, okay, okay. So he gave him a bag of silver coins and you know, sent him home uh, and said, uh, you're going to die. <laughs> so here's your bonus and you go home. Now that I think about it, it's a, quite a cold story. <laughs> Can you imagine to say something like that to the employee? This is for you. You're going to die soon. <laughs> go home. Um, anyway, so um, the person went home. Nothing happened. You know, one week went, one, two weeks went, one month went, two months went, six months went. And then the person comes back saying, look, I'm bored at home. Can I have my job back, please? So this person was working. Then the friend visited again. All right. And the friend visited. And then he saw that guy working. He's like, hey, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be dead. You know, because his accuracy, he was known for his accuracy. Um, so the, so this, uh, so the person says, no, I'm alive, obviously, I'm here, right? So he says, look, did you do something? Like, no, I did not do, I was at home. Uh, you did not do anything out of the ordinary? He's like, no, just walking back, I helped someone. They said, ah, you helped someone? What do you mean you helped someone? He's like, no, I was walking back. He gave him a story. While he was walking back to his hometown, uh, there was a guy standing on a bridge or someplace, and he was going to commit suicide. And so this guy obviously saw him and intervened. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, ah, I'm going to kill myself. I sold, you know, I'm in debt or some issue with the family. And he had financial. no money, financial problem, you can say. And he didn't have money. Uh, so he sold some things of his, whatever he had. And uh, he says, the silver I got, I was cheated. It's fake silver. And now uh, my family is ruined. So I have to, I'm going to kill myself out of you know, shame or whatever. I don't remember. Um, and this person, what he did was he had this bonus, you know, the silver coins that his boss gave him. He just switched the bag or just changed the coins. And he said, look, look, look here. It's not fake. It's real coins, <laughs> you know, and, and so, oh, it's real coins. And he was so happy. So he went home, but he didn't realize. But in doing that, he has saved a life. So karmically, he's entitled to live longer. So that's when Master Cho says, you don't have just one death date. You have a series. You have several death dates. He didn't, he didn't mention how many. Would be fun to be three. You know, it's like, or, know, anyway. So, um, so that is uh, why we talk about that. Anyway. With, with reference to death. Yeah, but it's on, some, on some level, right? Anyway, so that's what, ah, uh, yeah, that, what Alice Billy said, what Alice Billy said, right? About so the your soul. soul decides, right? The soul decides. Now, what she says is, so... 
if you are higher will, you see, w when the soul decides, that is basically an, uh, a manifestation of will, right? So when she says the higher will, right, decides, if the incarnated soul, the lower will, is uh, balanced, or what is the word, in line with the higher will, right? Or what did I, align. So when I'm studying, I write better notes sometimes. So I said, when the, with, when the will of the highest soul uh, and you, when the higher will and the lower will are aligned, that means you are more in contact with your higher soul, then there is no problem. I mean, because you know, when you, <laughs> because if the higher soul wants to leave, then the lower will will also, which is aligned, will also want to leave at that time. Okay, so that is basically uh, not a big deal. It's just changing of consciousness from one form to another. It's, 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 it's just the problem is based on things I've read. It's just basically most of the people, you see human beings react to things that they don't know, uh, usually uh, in a negative manner. Um, and that is why you see, it's like sometimes you see these movies where it's so dark and the whole movie is so frightening, but then the sun comes out. And then since you can see everything, it's like, this is not bad. You know, I thought I was, uh, you know, in the depths of hell, but there's actually grass and flowers here. <laughs> so you cannot see. So your mind starts to create certain, uh, you know, images. But just because you create that doesn't mean that the flower will change and the grass will change. Just your perception of it is, is different. So death is basically just a transition. Your body actually, some people say there's no death. There's no death. You just, it's just the body that's dead, but you do not die. All right, so so that is uh, the whole concept of of dying here, All right? So there are a few other things as well. We'll we'll talk about it if we have time. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I I remember the story. Ashley must used to mention it as a soothsayer uh, who used to, who came into the town. Anyway, so moving on. So if you look at uh, what we we're talking about, uh, coming back to the book, so going to the next paragraph, it says that uh, when the double finally quits the dense body, right, uh, when it's that final exit out of the physical body, this so-called etheric double that we have, or the etheric body or the energy body that we have, just hovers, right? Basically just floats over the dense body. It doesn't go really too far. And um, they say that, in this condition, it is known as a wreath and sometimes appears uh, to those, especially close to them, uh, as a cloudy figure. When, now, when, when this um, etheric body is floating around, right, it does take uh, the shape of the person, correct, or does have the shape of the person, it is very dully conscious and it's usually speechless, yes? Uh, it's in what you call a state of um, being peaceful and it's it's kind of a dreamy state. However, um, unless it is disturbed by a very, very loud sound, yes, uh, or violent emotions. And so I remember when I was reading uh, the other books of Theosophy, they would say, when a person dies, we are not supposed to get emotional and start screaming and shouting and crying and getting hysterical because it really disturbs this movement that we're talking about from the dense body moving out. And uh, these sounds and these interruptions, even emotional uh, eruptions of people um, do affect their, this process. Yes, I, I'll come to that a little later. But anyway, coming back to this, so you actually see it like a cloud uh, that hovers over the person. It's not necessarily lying down, it could be even vertical. And so um, I met this lady, I remember I was in Punjab, uh, actually in Jalandhar, Dr. Sagar. So I was there and, and she comes to me and she says, you know, I wanted to share something with you. It's a little strange. Uh, I don't know if you'd find it uh, weird. So I said, no, to share. And so she says, uh, she had come down to Delhi because um, their father had passed away. And so she says in the afternoon, mom was sleeping there and uh, the dad was also there. And she says, you know, suddenly I was sleeping next to my mom and I, I just saw my mom kind of get up and start walking towards the door. But when I look down, she's still there. Now, this is not really death I'm talking about. I'm just talking about this movement, which actually takes that form. Uh, so she says, what was that? Now, in her case, um, it's not this etheric um, 
double that we're talking about. But Wani's question, when you go into the astral form also, you take on the physical form. Right, and that's why when you go into your dream state and you are also in the astral uh, astral plane, you do recognize others because they take the same form. Right, uh, coming back uh, to the last one, the last time you decide to exit, when you exit, that disconnection is completely severed and you cannot come back to your body at all. Now, what happens with some of them is that they get so stuck with the physical form, because that's the only thing they used to, they are fearful of what exists beyond that, that they try to stick and stay close to the physical form, right? Which is not healthy, but there are people uh, who do that or souls that do that. So going on to the next paragraph, it says, it is during the withdrawal of the double, yes, and uh, as well as afterwards, during this time is very crucial for you and I, because at that point, the soul, now here they keep calling it the ego. The ego here is supposed to be higher soul, but uh, according to Master Cho, it's actually the incarnated soul. So at this point, you, the soul, will see your entire life pass through in front of you like a, like a 3D movie. And you will see everything that transpired in your lifetime nothing will be hidden. Yes. So if you have said something to someone and you knew you hurt the person, but you pretended you did not hurt, hurt that person at this point, you will be able to sense that. Right. And so it continues to say that every forgotten nook and corner of your memory, every secret will be revealed to you. Everything comes out right there. And Master Joe also mentions this in his book. And he says, picture by picture, event by event. And interestingly, one of the things that Master Cho says, he says, you will then become, you the incarnated soul, you the Jivatma, will then become the judge of what was done by you to another person. And so you will judge whether what was done was right, whether what you thought was helpful, loving, <laughs> you see, whether your actions were actually uh, that which helped someone or was there a malicious intent, everything will come out there. There's nothing that will be hidden from you. And so the whole thing will come in front of you, picture by picture, right? So it will include your whole life. And it says here, your successes, your failures, your loves and your hatreds. So even if you despise someone, you know, in the office or at home, uh, your big uh, Indian family <laughs> that we all have, it will come out at this point. Uh, he perceives the predominant tendency of, your, of the whole and the ruling thought. And so through your whole life, what was your ruling thought? Yes, you might have been bad and good, but overall, what were you? Yes, your thoughts, your words, were you actually more loving? Yes, maybe you got angry at points or whatever, but overall, what were you? Yes, in your actions, were you were actually kind, loving, generous, helpful, or there might be times where you decided not to help someone. That's okay, but overall. Now, based on this, right? One is you've been the judge of everything that has happened. It takes about a few seconds, but the whole thing comes to you. You know exactly what you did, right? You're the judge of all your actions, all your thoughts, all your emotions, all your words. And then based on that, whatever happens next, right? In your astral life, in your mental life is based on this. And so this is a very, very crucial point. So picture by picture, the whole thing, it takes, it says a few seconds. Yes, and the, the incarnated uh, soul literally relives the whole thing. And so it says, this is the, this is something that happens at the end of your life, right? So for me, those of you are Hatha yogis, for me, this is basically inner reflection, firm resolution. As simple as that. So instead of reflecting on your entire life at the end of your lifetime, Master Joe is actually basically helping us do it every day. Not just do it every day, but actually reflect and try and see how do you want to become. Instead of doing that, when you go into the astral plane post-death and then say, okay, fine, this is how I want to change and repent and purge yourself and purify yourself. Let's do it every day. So when we do this purging process, when we do the purification process every day, we start to actually notice things that we probably don't otherwise, right? Because it's only maybe 16 hours in a day that we have to remember. And then you realize, you know, when you said that to that person, you were not just saying it, but you were actually being spiteful, right? Or when you said that, you were actually jealous, but you were trying to be nice about it. 
So you start not only being aware of the things that you do with your actions, right? But you're also aware of your words and also the thoughts sometimes associated with your words. And sometimes it's not even words, right? You're just sitting there and you notice people and you already thought and you already created your own biases about that person, right? He is like this, she is like that. And uh, say, if, say, for example, a person did not do something. Say, oh, yeah, see, in your head, you'll say, see, I knew she will not do that. He will not do that. But maybe that's <laughs> their weakness, right? Uh, but we have to be aware of the way we think. Because that will be, you know, they call it in the Christian terminology, judgment day. The judgment day is not some great God coming there and judging your life. It's you, the incarnated soul, that will judge your whole life. Yes, and so... It would be better for us to recall our day, if possible, at night or the next day morning and see how we have worked on it. So the good you have to appreciate. Yes, don't forget that. God doesn't say, I'm going to only punish you. God is all merciful as well and, so, and all loving. And so you have to love the part that has been good. That which has made you the person you are today. Correct? And then, yes, the parts that you find, hey, you know, that wasn't very nice. The way I thought, the way I said it wasn't really good. Then you need to start reflecting. Yes, uh, erase it as you know in chronic psychotherapy or arhatic yogis, you know the other one. So you use these methods to change so that when it comes to this, you know, this last day and you have to see your whole life, hopefully you've made most of the changes, right? And so the purging process, post-death, uh, post um, for me, it's like removing the, the layers of clothes. So it's like I removed my coat of dense and etheric body. And now I'm going to move with just the astral clothes, right? It's just something that we use at that point, And then we're going to discard it at some point as well, even the astral. And so, and so to move on, it says, um, it says that as in the Koshi, Koshika, sorry, Koshi, Upanishads, I'm not sure how to say that, describes as uh, it talks about death. At death, prana gathers everything together, withdrawing from the body, hands everything onward to the knower, that is the incarnated soul, who is the receptacle of all. And so it's the judge of all, right? And then moving on to the next paragraph, before I hand it over to Amit. This stage is usually followed by a brief period of peaceful unconsciousness. Why? Because at this point, the etheric body, right, is kind of also trying to release itself off the astral. Because remember, at the, at the earlier point, they actually start to get entangled to work together. Now, at this point, they actually get uh, disentangled. So it's trying to move itself out of the astral body. And that point, when, when this process happens, there is a point of unconsciousness of the incarnated soul. And so preventing the man from functioning either in both your physical and in the astral form. It cannot do that. It just stays there for a minute. Now, normally this, this process, which we're talking about, you right, this unconscious part where it's trying to get out of the astral, usually takes a few minutes Yes, uh, in some cases, a few hours, and uh, in very few cases, a couple of weeks. Sorry, a couple of days to a couple of weeks. But on an average, it's usually a couple of hours. And um, I remember reading again in one of the Theosophy books where they say, um, you do not disturb the body for a certain period of time. The initial period of time, if I'm correct, was three hours. The initial three hours after death is very, very crucial for that transition. Most of them will, will move out already at this point. And then it, it continues for others for a longer period of time. It's very, very important uh, not to disturb them during this process, which is very important. And also remember, this is the time that they actually see their whole life. Yes, they have to be a judge of what they've done. So all this happens at this point. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, that's enough. Can you continue? Okay, I just did two paragraphs. I think so. Three paragraphs. Um, but you, this is connected to this. No, it's okay. You do what you want and then you come back. Um, okay, so it says when the double finally quits, it does not go far. It floats above it. Um, in this condition, it's known as a wraith and sometimes appear as very dully conscious or speechless unless disturbed by distress um okay so all this part about why it's hovering 
and why it's all that, we'll explain in one go. Because this is just going on. He mentioned it in the first page, then second page, then again he mentioned it on the third page. So we're just going to talk about why the uh, etheric body hovers and why it's connected. It depends on what type of soul is there, okay? But just to go around, that's what Sumi said about the whole life passing by swiftly uh, before your ego. Yeah, before the incarnate soul, not the ego. But that, that's what happens, uh, according to Master Chua. He would actually joke about He's like, have you met people? And, you know, they say, uh, they do something crazy to you. And then after that, they have what he calls temporary amnesia, right? So it's like, and then you remind them, you know, you did this to me. You said that. They're like, no, I never said that. He's like, what? You said that. <laughs> like, no, I never said that. So they get temporary amnesia. They, 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 they pretend that it never happened or they didn't say what they said, the hurtful things that they said. And so he's like, uh, but when your body dies, you cannot have temporary amnesia. The whole thing will repeat over and over again. That's, uh, I think Sumi didn't mention that. Uh, it has to repeat. It'll repeat over and over again until you accept it and you can move on. So you decide how long it's going to take. Is it going to take a uh, day, week, month, year, many years? It depends, okay? Um, now, Master Chua said the best way to do it, it's just like Sumi said, is inner reflection. So the best way to do it is you recognize that you're human. You are not perfect, so you can make mistakes. So if, if you see something, even though it's terrible, because sometimes you experience emotion, you say, oh my God, I did that. So sorry. Uh, 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 I'll try and be better. Okay, I did that. Just, just say you did it and it moves on all right it moves on uh and then the next page and the next one and the next one now one of the things i was wondering is would i be able to think the way i do when my body's dying like now i'm telling you this but will you be able to do that you know at that point you know so when i was reading a book on uh, one of alice Billy's books and based on my interaction with another person is according to what i understood was um you are, you are the same because your mental body is still there, your astral body is still there. It's just the physical body that's detaching. So you are yourself. So it's literally what Alice Billy described, just the consciousness from the physical plane is shifting, but you are you. In fact, you can even see and recognize your loved ones in the inner world if your body's dead. Uh, but you can, uh, because you're in the, say you're in the emotional body, you can, you can see their, you can sense the emotions. You can see their, their astral body. And you can see their mental body because you, the soul, are still have in those bodies. All right. So, um, so the best way is to erase it, uh, not to erase it, but just say you're sorry and uh, oh, that was a mistake. Admit it and move on. Admit it and move on. Right? And learn your lesson. Yeah. So from yeah. that, so you don't repeat the mistake again and again. Even if you don't learn your lesson, that's okay. Just admit it. <laughs> I mean, you're dead. So okay, step one, step two. Just admit it. The moment you admit it that you did that, it just yes. it just goes very fast, okay? Because these things happen very quickly. Now, the second thing is, um, what are they going to see? So, you admit, now, sometimes this process, by the way, starts to happen, if you've done some crazy things, it starts to happen when the body's still alive also, not only when the body's dead. Yeah. All right? So, according to Master Choa, it... Um, like uh, he was watching that movie, uh, The Last Samurai, you know, The Last Samurai, Tom Cruise. It's on Netflix. Um, <laughs> really? I didn't know. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it? Pretty much, yeah. So it's, uh, it's on Netflix. So, uh, so he would keep getting these visions over and over again. So according to Master Cho, after he saw the movie, he's like, ah, look, he's having the flashback even when he's in the body. <laughs> so that's why it's fun to watch movies with the... Uh, Master with Jim. the teacher, sometimes he gives you insight. Sometimes he fast forwards oh, no, most of the movie. No, no, there's a movie. It's a <laughs> cinema, so he can't fast forward anything. Oh. So he'll fast forward only if you've seen the movie. So if he has seen the movie, if he, if he has seen it. <laughs> so uh, now the next part. So I'm just going to skip all this because it's just not important for you. Um, the stage is followed by a brief period of peaceful consciousness, blah, blah, blah. Some men shake themselves free from the etheric envelope. You see, it's so vague. <laughs> some men who men I don't know gorgeous men blonde men black men some men shake themselves free from the etheric envelope in a few moments others within a few hours days or even weeks when I read that I really want to know what men because <laughs> I want to be the man who shakes it off in a few moments Hopefully you know? you just will. shake it off like the dog shakes off water you shake out your yeah. etheric double <laughs> alright anyway now um the next one is what I was talking about. As days pass, the higher principles gradually... Okay, now uh, we'll talk about that later. But what do you mean by some men? 
according to Master Choa, that's why the people, they call them earthbound souls. So it basically, if you have no concept of the soul, if you are extremely, um, uh, you know, materialistic, obsessed with money, uh, the lower nature, those kind of things, you need the physical body, right? So the intensity is so much and it's basically almost auto-programmed that you will, you will just uh, try and grab the physical body. And that's why you, uh, your, your soul. Look, there are two aspects here. Number one, you see, you the soul are, if you've done achieving oneness of the high soul, you're interpenetrating uh, from the 12th chakra, it high principle interprets the lower one. You go through the mental, you're interpenetrating the emotional, the etheric, and the physical, right? So the soul is withdrawn from the, the physical, but it's still in the etheric. Now, if the incarnate soul is not very pure and is very materialistic at that point, would we'll try and go back into the physical, and that's why it's hanging around there. So it depends how, how, how easily it detaches. That's why the some men they're talking about are people who are extremely materialistic. Uh, in other forms of theory, they call them earthbound. But basically, they don't have any idea of what the, what the soul is. And we'll come back to it because they'll talk about possessing animals and all. We'll talk about that. Uh, so basically, that is the whole idea of uh, why you're hanging around there. So people who know that, ah, oh, this is just not my body. Okay, I'm out of here. And your consciousness is more focused on the soul. You see, energy follows where thought or intention is focused. So if you are you, you're the soul, your intention is more focused on going back on the higher soul, the energy withdraws faster. But if you, the soul, is more focused on trying to, oh my God, I need that body. I, uh, the body is everything to me. The energy will start to move towards it, but it cannot go in, so it starts to hover. Okay? And it will remain that way. Now, once a soul has completely gone out of the etheric body, the etheric body then starts to die. And that, just like the physical body, starts to disintegrate because there's nothing holding the etheric body together now. Right? It's the soul energy that holds the body together. And then we'll cover the less later. Actually, it's better if we just finish this because this is a little confusing. So maybe we'll need a summary. Yeah, we can do a summary the day after. Hmm. The next session is the after, okay. Yeah, so um, let's just answer a couple of questions. So um, with reference to murder and suicide, that is one of the laws that we as uh, Jivatmas cannot go against. You cannot kill another soul, right? Uh, and you cannot take your own life. Those two really go against and, and, and the purging for that is quite difficult. Maybe we, if we have time, we'll talk about that later. I have no idea. No. <laughs> I asked Master what happens. Uh, I mean, I heard him talk about suicide. He just said, not my special. <laughs> and the soul goes in a dark place. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's, so, it's, it's one of the We'll talk things. about it. Um, uh, so murder. And now with reference to accidents, usually accidents are not accidents. It's not uh, an accident. It, there is a reason why it happens at that point. Right. So um, to answer that, uh, there are usually no accidents. That the the time of death was also at that point. Yeah. Um, that that we asked Master, by the way, just to be clear, uh, according to one teacher, Master Chokok Sui, um, we asked him, uh, what about accidents? And uh, you know, when he was talking about the whole, uh, the you see the the soul starts withdrawing thirty days before death. He says even before an accident the 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 soul already knows is starting to withdraw now uh that being said there was no way to validate this information uh so he would actually he joked after that so i don't know whether he said <coughs> so if you're going onto a bus you scan everyone's aura if all their aura is almost zero you don't get on the bus <laughs> you run away from there <laughs> like final destination anyway but the point is um um it's very difficult to validate this. Why? Number one, you're going to have to look at someone's seed before an accident. You're going to have to notice. Yeah, you don't know what it's going to be, right? Then you're going to notice that they're going to die and not tell them anything because you're experimenting whether they will really die. That sounds a little, I don't know, sadistic. Anyway, but there's no way to, you, you understand how complicated it is to validate this. So it's just uh, based on what Master says and my assumption will, will make sense. You see, your understanding of what is uh, possible and not possible is constrained by your intellectual capacity and your ability to 
see things at a certain level. But the higher beings, they see things at a much, much higher level. It's just like if you went 500 years ago, you've seen these movies where they time travel and they have a phone and they have, you know, Wi-Fi. To explain these things, it would seem almost, uh, I mean, even 200, 300 years ago would seem, unless you're speaking to Nikolai Tesla, would seem almost uh, magical. People would probably stone you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe burn you. <laughs> Use you as firewood. Um, now, with regards to death and killing and uh, suicide, you have to understand, like I mentioned, you have to understand everything is energy. You have the higher will. You have the lower will. You have the will of the incarnated soul. Now, that will of the incarnated soul can be contaminated by several things because it is in the physical plane. And so you have still, that's why you have your free will not to follow even your destiny because you have your, your bias based on several factors. So, uh, so that is why it's important to practice spiritual growth and align. That's why one of the things of uh, the Lord's Prayer, one of the statements is, let thy will be done, right? So what will are you talking about? You're trying to say, let my lower will be aligned with the will of my higher nature. That is a big hint in itself. That's why the Lord's Prayer has many secrets, the esoteric version of this. Anyway. Okay, so um, keeping in mind uh, the... Uh, what was it? Yeah, so when people have near-death experiences, this, remember we were talking about that, uh, that link, the etheric cord, that's not completely severed at this point, right? So because if, if that cord and this cord is completely taken off, they cannot come back. What are you talking about? Uh, almost near yeah, death, right? They go, they go out and then they come back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it usually happens, for example, doctors have experiences of this uh, on the operation table where they think the person is dead and then they, they come back in a couple of seconds. I have no idea how they work, but I've not seen it, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you want to see it right now, but anyways. <laughs> So that's that's a couple of those questions. Ekta, with reference to mummification, we'll come to that uh, in the next uh, chap in the next uh, session on the same. Sometimes, chapter. if you have a good teacher, the teacher will help you pull out of the etheric body. That's my understanding based on one experience with one of the disciples um, of uh, a teacher, and his body died. His etheric body was there maybe for just uh, literally a few seconds, and that's. All right, so um, Sonia, yes, um, that's with reference to people who know they're going to die. Somewhere they sense it's time and then they start uh, putting things in order. They start yeah. asking to meet people. Uh, they want their children to come back. Um, and then you wonder why they're doing all this. And then in a couple of days, you'll realize. Yeah. Now, uh, Deepa, your question about uh, the uh, pregnancy I think we should stop now. It's too uh, please political remember, question. <laughs> please remember, and I and hopefully I can answer it on Wednesday. We'll meet you on Wednesday at six thirty. But yeah, it's yes. Uh, a gore is it human flesh? Human flesh. Uh, <laughs> is it? Is there anything spiritual related? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They do eat. See, they. Uh, it's, it's a it, very different concept, yeah. They eat even poo poo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, uh, this is the higher ones. It's based on the principle of oneness. Uh, they see the divinity in everything. I, I'll just give you the essence, not the whole uh, explanation. But it's based on the principle of oneness. They see the divinity in everything. So they even see the divine in their poo poo and in, in the, the dead bodies, and they just eat everything. But the problem is the younger agoris, the less evolved ones, who are following these ones are eating the poo-poo and thinking it's so stinky <laughs> because they're not one with the poo-poo. Uh, but Master Chua said, look, just because you're one with something doesn't mean you need to, to eat it. <laughs> you can still eat proper food. <laughs> so, That's Master style. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's how he sees life. Anyway. anyway. Can you scan someone's basic chakra if you feel they're going to die? You can. Yeah. I don't tell them, like, ah, I'm going to die. But, you know, basic is very difficult to tell because they could just have a fever or they could just be depressed and so many factors. The yeah. only way is to have a look at their physical permanency. You see, uh, I remember, remember you mentioned uh, when Master Glenn would tell you, you know, you have these guys who take their motorbikes and cars and jump off. Ah, Master Cole. Huge Master Cole. I give the example in the psychotherapy class. Oh, yes. Uh, evil can evil. Yeah, so tell them about that. So no, that no, way, if you scan the basic yeah, chakra, it's a, Okay, just... Yeah, okay, basic. go and survive. No, I said, yeah, yeah. No, it's psychotherapy based, not to do with this. 
just for them to understand what you're talking about when the survival goes down. Basic chapter is your psychological aspect is survival. So when you do anything against your survival, your suicidal or something, the basic chakra starts to come down. But that doesn't mean you're going to die. That means you're doing something that's not good for your survival. Yeah. All right, for your body to survive. And the chakras have a consciousness of its own. So it, it, it senses this and starts to react. Okay. So we'll call it a day for now. And uh, we'll meet you again on Wednesday. Yeah, we definitely need a summary because we need to tie this all in. Because they spoke about the astral body and, you know, you seeing all these things over and over again has to do with the astral body. And I don't know why the author spoke about it because it's about the etheric. So uh, we'll, we'll try and talk a little bit more about the astral body in terms of death and, and tie everything together and end the chapter. You know, all right. Day after tomorrow. Yes, day after. Let's close our eyes. We just say a thank you for it. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokok, Sri Lord Maha Guruji Mary, to the Lord Christ, to all the great beings and the masters of theosophy, to the great beings of knowledge, light and wisdom, to the beings of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's and our internet connections to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for your great, great blessings, for all your light, your wisdom and understanding, your tremendous patience with us. Help us to continue to assimilate all this knowledge and use it to become better instruments in your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Atma Namaste, everybody. Thank you so much. Yes, we'll see you day after tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Bye. I'll get that off first. Yes. Bye to everyone.